Hello everyone and welcome back for another video. This is Cassie. Uh, today we're going to be making a light up card. I know I made one recently and I just had so much fun with it and it was so easy. Uh, hence the name Easy Light. We're going to be making another one. So let me show you the package. There's already one missing obviously because I made one. But that is the Easy Light by Pear Blossom Press. And then we're also going to be using the My Favorite Things Catacorn Stamp Set. Love this. I just thought it would be so much fun to make their little horns light up. So we are going to do that. And then we're also going to use one of the dies here from the Trinity Stamp Slimline, Slimline Scenic Borders. I've got some watercolor paper cut down to be the front of a slimline card. And then I also have a card base cut down to seven and a half inches by eight and a half inches. And then I have some Express It card stock for my stamping. Let's get started with our card front. We're gonna do some ink blending on the watercolor card. I was just checking on the back to make sure that I had cleaned my uh, beauty brush enough because sometimes I don't always do that. My first color that we're gonna be using is the Spun Sugar Distress Oxide. This blends beautifully with those beauty brushes right on top of that watercolor paper. Again, we'll check our brush to make sure. And then we're gonna go into some shaded lilac and that's gonna be our middle color. At first, these colors are going to look a little bit funny together, but they do end up blending beautifully. That's part of the charm of these beauty brushes. I think they blend things so nicely. So that looks pretty good. Now I am going to clean off my brush. I'll make sure that I did a pretty good job. And then we're going to come in and get the Blueprint Sketch Distress Oxide color. That's going down on the bottom. Like I said, it almost looks like a, a weird color combo to begin with. But once we do some blending, it starts to really come together. So I'll go into that shaded lilac again and we'll soften that edge. And then it really looks like it's coming together. All right, now that that's all blended and pretty, we're going to put that in my splat box. And we're going to grab some Brutus Monroe Pearl Aqua Pigment. So I've got this. This is one of my favorite things for sparkly splatter. It's basically clear when it dries, but it will dry with all kinds of splatter. Notice that I am not putting the cap all the way on. Just, just keep that in mind because we're gonna, you're gonna see it again later. <laughs> all right, I'm splattering that all over my background. I'm being very generous, very liberal with that, and take a look at how pretty that looks. I'm gonna set that off to the side to dry, but that's how sparkly and shimmery it's gonna be. I'm gonna take the other piece of watercolor cardstock and I'm gonna take the cloud border, or it could be possibly bushes, I suppose, however you wanna use that. That's from Trinity Stamps again. And then I'm gonna cut out two of those using that same watercolor paper. I'll run that through my die cutting machine and here we are in slow-mo, check it out. Oh, Miles. I was so nervous about him getting on the, the cutting machine and hurting himself that I wasn't paying any attention to the fact that he just dumped over a bunch of my pearls. But that's okay, it only took about a third of the bottle. Ugh. So I'm gonna leave that there, I'll splatter that all over my clouds, we're not gonna let that go too much to waste, and then we'll move on. But yeah, I thought you'd like to see that in slow-mo, if Miles did make an appearance. <laughs> we'll move on to our stamping. So this paper is the Express It paper, it is my favorite for Copic coloring. But then again, I haven't tried a ton for Copic coloring, to be honest with you. Uh, I just love this stuff. It, it's just like a very stark white and the, the colors just go on beautifully. I did stamp that with Memento Tuxedo Black and then I stamped a few more rainbows and a few more clouds just by hand and that's why one of those isn't, isn't going to show up very well. My initial coloring is very flat. It's very flat and very pastel, which is kind of what I was going for. Not the flat look, but the pastel look. Uh, and so I end up putting down all this wash of color and I do end up coming in with some darker shades here after a bit. And the reason I do that later on is just because I realized I didn't want it to be so flat. I thought I could get away with that uh, and you could, but I really ended up just wanting some more color. So you'll see that later on. I don't remember if I actually show all the coloring, but I do show some of it. And so I've showed you the colors up on the screen. I'll have them listed down below if that's something that you're interested in, in seeing. I'll have those listed in the description box so that you can, you know, take a look at those colors. But I basically just matched them up to the Distress Oxides that I used and then just kind of tried to grab colors that I thought would go well together in that rainbow order. So for the cloud, I'm just using some T1 just on the edges. And it looks kind of dark here, but it definitely softens out as it dries and it's almost not noticeable there when I'm putting it on, it is, but it does dry back a bit. And then we'll move on to coloring our first cat. All right, so while we're coloring, I am gonna talk a little bit about my motivation for why I have this channel. 
Um, we're going to just, if you haven't heard the story before, there you go. But if you have, you can go ahead and fast forward on through. Um, I started this channel because, well, for starters, I love creating. I love, love, love creating. And I love showing other people how to do things and inspiring other people to want to be creative because I love it so much. I want you to love it so much, not necessarily what I make, but I want you to love creating. I, I can't even describe just how much I love it and how much joy it brings me. And because I have so much joy in it, I wanted to share that. And I never really thought I could start a channel, but my son did encourage me to do it. Uh, and his leaving his his leaving our home after he graduated high school was the real motivation that I needed because it was it felt like a little bit of an end of an era sort of and I knew that I needed a little something. Praise God, my daughter was still with us at that time. You know, she still lived at home and she still does now. Thank the Lord <laughs> because she does help keep me sane for sure. Uh, but it when he left, it was just re really really hard. I feel like all I've ever been has been a mom because I was a young mom um, at 22 years old, barely 22 years old. And so he's been around for forever. And when he encouraged me to do it, I just decided to go ahead and give it a try. And it has brought me so much joy. And I keep doing it because it brings me joy. I love the relationships that I've gained. I love sharing all of that with you all. And I love, um, I love hopefully inspiring for me, it isn't about numbers. It isn't necessarily about being on design teams or getting free things, although those are nice perks. Um, but it isn't about the numbers I draw or any of that. It is about inspiring. And I really do hope that that happens. I hope that that causes you to want to be creative and to want to share your talents with the world. That has just been on my heart a little bit. And I just wanted to share that with you all so you knew where I was coming from. Okay, so let's get started with our mechanism. Uh, my camera didn't want to work beforehand so things are already attached but let me show you I already attached the mechanism down with some double-sided tape the battery has a plus sign and a minus sign and you just want to match that up and set that in and then you press the purple button to make sure that your lights are working and they are I had already poked the holes uh, where I wanted my lights to be and so when you know where you want your lights to be go ahead and use some either some scotch tape I'm using washi washi's fine too and I like to tape it right up to the edge now Amanda who owns pear blossom press she actually showed that you could use a clear scotch tape and you could tape right over the, the top of it and it won't move but now that those are taped in place I'll check it out and it looks pretty good the rest of it's gonna get pretty messy only because and it doesn't matter where I actually tape down the rest of my my um, wires. It really doesn't matter. So I'm just going to use a little washi tape to just make sure things are out of the way and just tack it down. So it looks like a hot mess back there, but it does not matter. All right, I do want to make sure that I have plenty of room so that my ne mechanism isn't hit all the time. So I doubled up my foam tape and I'm using scotch tape. I do know that Amanda has some tape that would work perfectly so you wouldn't have to double it up in her store. And if I can find that, I'll link it down below, not the store, but the, the tape. Uh, but I'm just using the double-sided tape and I'm putting it all around the mechanism itself. And then I'm also just going to make sure that I avoid the lights, but you can put it over the top of the wires. That's not going to bug it. So there we have it and it still works perfectly, but I want my recipient to know where to push. So I've pulled out this Lawn Fawn stamp set called Push Here, and I'm just going to stamp directly over the top of where I would want the recipient to push. I'm just going to pull some uh, VersaFine Claire Nocturne ink out because I know it'll be a nice crisp black ink. And it usually always stamps pretty well, even when I've screwed up and stamped last. <laughs> All right, I'm noticing that my unicorn horns are not see-through, obviously. So what I'm going to do, you could easily just punch a hole, but I'm going to go a step further and I'm going to take my X-Acto knife and I'm going to cut right inside the lines of the outline of the horn and I'm going to cut it out. So I'll show you here what I mean in a second, but I'm cutting out the horn and that way everything's still intact except that horn piece is missing. And then what I'll do with that is I'll back it with a little bit of vellum. So here I'll show you what I was talking about. I just cut out the horn. And if you have too many white lines, you can use, you, use a black marker to get rid of that. So I'll take a um, glue pen 
and go around the outside of that, stick down my piece of vellum, and then cut off all the excess. And I'll do that for all three of the cats that I plan to have on the outside. There's one cat that's going to go on the inside, that one I'm not worried about, but the two that go on, or the three that go on the outside. I'm going to peel off all of my release paper, and I'll put this on the front of my slimline card. And there will be a little bit of a white border on the top and the bottom, which is fine, that's what I wanted. Uh, and this card folded will be three and three quarter inches by eight and a half inches. And now we're going to glue down all of our little pieces, making sure that those horns go right over the holes so that way when the mechanism is pressed, the horns light up, which is so cool. Um, but yeah, I'm having so much fun with this. I love, love it. And now I want to make everything a light up card. <laughs> These are just so cool. We'll tack down our last rainbow. And then we're even going to put down some of the clouds that I had cut out. Just a few of them. Not, we're not going to go too crazy with that. And then I finally remembered I should put a sentiment on there. So again, VersaFine Claire Nocturne ink. And it says, you're one of a kind. I like to take a lot of risks, don't I? <laughs> and the inside, we're just going to uh, glue down the three clouds along with that fourth and final cat. I don't put a sentiment on the inside. Uh, I may write one or, or stamp one later. We'll see. But this is that. I did want to make an envelope to match. So I have the Trinity Stamps. Uh, this is the Slimline Envelope Die. And I'm going to pair that up with some of my Tonic Specialty Paper and Specialty Card. That Specialty Paper is called... What is that called? Oh, Pink Petals. That is the Pink Petals Paper. And you can see it's kind of... Well, flimsy, really. So this is one of those papers that I don't know if I would want to necessarily... You could send it through the mail, I think, just fine, as long as you're using a strong liquid glue, which is what I'm doing. I'm using the Tonic Deluxe, or Nouveau Deluxe Liquid Glue. And that stuff holds really, really well once it's dry. Uh, and this one I'm going to make is a side opener, basically. I guess that's what I'm going to call it. So I cut out two of those little flaps. Those are my sides. You've, if you've seen me make the envelopes before, there is another piece you can use for a top flap, and I do that for the purple uh, one that I show you. I don't show you how I make it, but I will show it to you. And then we'll just glue down all of our pieces here. But this card, or this paper, is a little bit flimsy. It definitely feels like, like um, a really weathered paper. It's really cool. And then we'll put our last side flap on. And then we'll start gluing those pieces together so that it actually looks like an envelope. But I wanted to make sure that everything was good and dry before I did that. But yeah, this is, if you're going to send it through the mail, you'd want to make sure that your address is probably either written with a Sharpie or you put it onto one of those address labels and maybe glue that down with extra glue just to make sure that nothing comes off. Or you could always just hand deliver it. So here we've got that, and now this is going to open on the side, and so it makes it a little bit easier sometimes to put those slimline cards in if you want to do it this way. So that's another option. But then I'm also going to bring in the Waves specialty card. Now this is card stock that Tonic has, and here is a top opening one. So there we have both of our envelopes, and here we have our awesome card, which is so much fun. I love it. I love it and I would love to know what you think of it, that and the envelopes. So I hope this inspires you to want to go get crafty. Thank you so much for all the love and support that you always give. If you liked this video, please hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't already done so. And as always, thank you for everything you guys do, your sweet comments, your using my affiliate links, everything you do. You guys are pretty awesome and I will see you very soon in another video. Bye everybody.